Prince Harry and Meghan Markle visited an AIDS Day event on Friday in Nottingham in their first public appearance together since announcing their engagement. Ali Scarf Agents France Press, Getty Images The engagement of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle last week inspired a wave of news coverage and excitement. And that raised a question that comes up every time a British royal does something big why do Americans care? After all, as an oped in the Washington Post argued recently, the Founding Fathers violently overthrew our teasipping stamp taxing overlords in large part so that we should not have to genuflect in front of the altar of royal bloodlines. Right. Yet Americans do love a British royal wedding. In 2011, they reacted with similar excitement to the wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton, and to the births of their children that followed. These bouts of monarch mania in the former colonies have played out in a pop culture environment shaped by imported shows like Downton Abbey and The Crown. British programming, long a staple of American public television, has spread to services like Netflix, Britbox and Acorn TV. Indeed, from the Great British Bake Off to the creeping adoption of British slang, we appear to be living in a golden age of American Anglophilia, or an affection for the English and their ways. Interest in the House of Windsor may be the most distilled version of that trend. President Obama even remarked upon it in 2015. I think it's fair to say that the American people are quite fond of the royal family, Mr. Obama said during a White House visit from Prince Charles. They like them much more than they like their own politicians. Queen Elizabeth II touring Jamestown in Richmond, Virginia, in 2007 before adoring American crowds. Chris Jackson Getty Images Prince Charles politely disagreed, but a survey by the polling firm YouGov suggested Mr. Obama was right, depending on which American politician and which British royal the respondents were asked about. So what is the appeal? Observers of American Anglophilia say it is complicated. Tom Sykes, an Englishman in Dublin who writes about the royal family for the Daily Beast, described the royals as the ultimate celebrities, albeit ones with some meat on the bone. I do think if you're going to be interested in celebrities you don't know, Mr. Sykes said, the royal family are probably more interesting people to be interested in than the Kardashians, say, because of the thousand years of history behind them, the era of prestige television has helped cultivate and encourage these transatlantic tastes by making escapist fare instantly, and repeatedly, accessible in a way that rental VHS versions of Howard's End were not for an earlier generation. Streaming services have helped introduce Americans to shows like Downton Abbey and The Crown, turning them into critical darlings and bestowing American celebrity upon their British stars, like the actors Michelle Dockery and Claire Foy. Claire Foy in her role as Queen Elizabeth in the television series The Crown, with Matt Smith, who played Prince Philip. Robert Biglaski Netflix Not all successful British shows in the U.S. Focus on the elite Hello, Fleabag, and Chewing Gum. But the interior lives of the aristocracy, especially the royal family, have been particularly popular, from 1990s films like The Remains of the Day, and early 2000s hits like The Queen, Glamour and Escapism are a big part of the allure. It also helps that the British royal family, which received $57.6 million in taxpayer money during the 2016 to 2017 fiscal year, does not play any formal role, ceremonial or otherwise, in American life. Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge, Wright, greeting New York children in 2014 with Trelane McRae, the wife of Mayor Bill de Blasio. Nielsen Barnard JT Images and while the monarchy may be the most popular institution in British public life, some in Britain criticize it as out of touch, said Suzanne Mackey, the executive producer of The Crown, whose second season begins this week, there would probably be an apathy, an ambivalence, and some people would even be ill-disposed to them symbolically in what they represent, said Ms. Mackey, who is British. So it's always interesting to us to counter that with the American relationship with the royal family and interest in the royal family, Ms. Mackey attributed the royal family's appeal, in part, to the mystique, the mythology around the throne and the monarchy. But for Americans, not just any royal will do. The August wedding of Prince Philip and Annika Marinkovic in Serbia made barely a ripple in the United States. Americans are particularly interested in the British monarchy, it's not just monarchy in general, said Arianne Chernick, a historian at Boston University. You don't see the same kind of interest directed at the Japanese crown.
I think it is about this special relationship, at root, and so the engagement of Prince Harry to a biracial actress Ms. Markle's mother is African American was celebrated as a moment of inclusivity, even though the House of Windsor is not even the first in Europe to welcome a black princess or duchess into the royal family. Anglophilia in the United States dates back to almost immediately after the American Revolution ended British rule in the 13 colonies, Ms. Jernick said. There is a desire to retain that strong cultural tie, and I think that persists to this day. From left, Penelope Wilton as Isabel Crawley, Maggie Smith as Violet, Dowager Countess of Grantham and Elizabeth McGovern as Cora, Countess of Grantham, in a scene from, Downton Abbey, Nick Briggs Carnival Films for Masterpiece It is a feeling that has long cut across the social divide. In 1860, when Albert Edward, the Prince of Wales, visited the United States on the eve of the Civil War, hundreds of thousands gathered to see him in cities from Boston to Richmond. B.A., which would soon be the secessionist capital, said Eliza to Markin, a scholar at the University of California, Berkeley, the love of this 18-year-old traveling prince was described as a universal feeling, Ms. Tamarkin said, South Carolina had committed to secede if Abraham Lincoln wins, his winning was assured, Wall Street was in a panic, but the Prince of Wales was actually on the cover of Harper's Weekly five times in six weeks.